What's up everyone, I'm Jonathan Zaharik and this is your in-depth guide to winter hiking preparation. Today I'm filming right here in the heart of the High Peaks at High Peaks Cyclery in Lake Placid, New York. High Peaks Cyclery is a cornerstone for outdoor enthusiasts here in Lake Placid and they've been here since 1983. Winter in the Adirondacks isn't just a season, it's a formidable force. Here the mountains are indifferent to our presence and the weather can shift from severe to serene without a moment's notice. That's why taking winter hiking seriously with the right gear and knowledge is not just about comfort, but also survival. Also, High Peak Cyclery does offer professional guiding services, and that is also a testament to their commitment to safe and well-equipped adventures. Whether you're a seasoned hiker or just starting out, it is crucial to know exactly what to take out so that you are the most prepared. So stay tuned as we unpack the essentials for a safe and exhilarating hike. Today, we're gonna go over foot gear, top layers, bottom layers, head, hat, food and water, and all the other additional stuff that you might need that you might not even realize that you might need. The one thing about the Adirondacks, and maybe spend some time here in the winter, but if you've only hiked here in the summertime and you're interested in getting out, out into the high peaks in the wintertime, well, never gauge what the top is gonna be like when you get out of your car at that trailhead. Always know before you go. The first thing I wanna say is make sure that you don't just prepare with the right things in your backpack and what's on your body, but also the knowledge, knowing beforehand, checking forms, checking the weather, checking apps, asking people who might have been up in that range a day prior. If you can figure that out, do your due diligence. It could save you in the long run. Taking something that you don't think that you need because it's better to have something with you and not need it than not have something and need it. So make sure you do your due diligence beforehand so you know what the weather is like and what you expect. With that being said, let's get right in the foot gear. I got a table, a plethora of equipment here that I've gathered from around the store here. And if you come into the store and you wanna buy something between now and the end of 2023, just because you watched this video, you're gonna get 10% off of your purchase of whatever winter gear that you end up grabbing from the shop. Make sure you come in, say you saw the video and uh, mention the discount that will be in the description below. So one thing that's really crucial when it comes to your footwear is having temperature regulated boots because you're not gonna take what you hiked in the summertime and put that on your foot for the winter time. You wanna make sure that your shoes are insulated and sometimes there are warmer days but warmer days in the high peaks in the winter means wet conditions because that snow will be melting so it's important that your shoes are waterproof and insulated this is actually a boot that i have worn for all the winter hiking that i've done it's a great boot to start out with and just like your summer shoes you want to make sure that fits right because not every winter boot is going to fit the same the oboes bridger this from what i've seen is one of the most popular shoes to start out winter hiking in micro spikes Micro spikes are essential when there's ice, sometimes hard packed snow, but most of the time, if the snow is greater than eight inches, which is like 95% of the entire winter season, then you're gonna be wearing your snowshoes. But for approach trails, or even some sections where you feel like your, uh, your snowshoes aren't gripping well, you have micro spikes. Now there are two brands that people are pretty familiar with. You have Cthulhu and you also have Hillsound. I personally have not been a fan of Cthulhu because I feel like they break really easily and I also think they're pricing them way too high for something else that you could get such as Hillsound. Hillsound micro spikes I've been using them for years now they even have this strap here in the front that helps keep the micro spike on as well. The spikes are also much bigger and I feel like these guys can last me two seasons whereas I feel like I have a pair of Cthulhu's I have to change it out every single season. Also, the boot that this micro spike is on is the Loa Renegade Warm. It's another alternative. I personally have never worn it, but I've heard fantastic things about it. Snowshoes. Snowshoes are the most important thing that you will be carrying with you every single time you go out into the high peaks because you might have no snow at all at the parking lot come end of March if we've had a terrible season and you're gonna still have five feet, six feet, sometimes even more than 10 feet of snow still up because of how it snow drifts and stuff like that. So always carry your snowshoes. You will always need them. And trust me, you do not wanna get a hefty fine. My preferred brand for snowshoes is MSR. Um, some other brands out there are, for example, Tubbs. Tubbs might be the other most popular one, um, but Tubbs does a uh, BOA binding that tightens down. And what I do know is that can break. If the BOA binding does break, you're not able to actually repair that out in the wilderness. The reason why MSR snowshoes are so awesome is because these straps right here are pretty much equivalent to regular ski tie straps. Just like this right here, you always want to carry multiples of these in your pack because you never know what you're needed for you can use it for your shoes you can use it for your backpack you can use it for just fix the straps with this so these are very minimalistic and never go out on the high peaks without your ascenders 
the sender not just helps you go uphill, but it also helps all the crampons in the bottom keep in full contact with the scent of the, the, the hill. This is a mountaineering snowshoe. One way to keep your feet dry and something that is also crucial to have, gaiters. I see a lot of people winter hiking without gaiters and I'll tell you, I cringe because these are, so I, if I, I will turn back to the house and get these. The, these are so important because these will keep the bottoms of my feet completely dry and I can trudge through snow and I can plow through snow and I don't even feel the snow. And it also can act as an extra layer of insulation. Even though they're not physically insulated, they can keep your feet and shins and legs feeling much warmer. These are Hillsound Armadillo LT Gators. And I have strayed away from outdoor research. I don't really like them. I feel like build quality isn't the best and they use a Velcro system. And these guys are breathable. They stretch. They're still completely waterproof. Zipper system is very reliable. And uh, I'm they're very, very comfortable. And of course, socks. I would say that your summer hiking socks can translate in the winter. You don't have to have a super thick sock unless it's ridiculously cold outside, but many of you probably use this brand already, but Darn Tough is who I definitely recommend. Their socks are lifetime warrantied, and it's always important, of course, to have one or two extra pairs of these in your backpack at all times because your feet will get wet, they will get cold. Hand warmers and foot warmers. These are an essential piece to have in your gear, in your pack. I'm telling you, the amount of times where I was freaking out and I actually remembered that I had these because I don't use them that often, you need to get, they're, they're cheap. Always keep these in your pack because it could also be someone else that you're passing on the trail that needs them. Oh, and of course, these socks are merino wool. Most of the stuff that I'm gonna show you today that is layering is gonna have a lot of wool incorporated with it because wool is probably one of the best organic materials for wicking moisture away and also keeping you nice, warm, and dry. So speaking of merino wool, let's get into tops. Buying winter gear is absolutely expensive, but it's also necessary because you get what you pay for with winter gear specifically. So if it's expensive, more than likely, you either won't have to buy another piece ever again and or it also has a lifetime warranty. Save yourself the hassle and definitely just buy the quality gear that you know is gonna help you get through. Ornavox, Ornavox will actually make several pieces that I will show you here, um, but Ornavox has a fantastic legging, merino wool legging, and top layer as well. I use both of these out there. And honestly, I hiked in the Seward range today and it was like 22 degrees. There was six inches of fresh snow. And I just wore the top layer. This top layer pretty much is just a quarter zip. And it's the same thing with this for the leggings. You can get other synthetic shirts as well. This Rab Conduit Crew is also a fantastic option. You don't have to have a merino wool weight, a uh, merino wool base layer. You can also just uh, use pretty much a heavy weight shirt that's gonna wick everything away as well and that can even be your under armor shirt if you'd like but also make sure you have an extra shirt with you in your backpack because you will get sweaty the reason why your layering system is so vital is not just because you want to make sure you have the right coat for the conditions you're going into but it's all about temperature regulation every single thing that you wear regulates your body temperature as you hike more and more, you will figure out exactly what that means for you. You'll learn the gear that you're using, how to use it, when to use it. But the three layering system, pretty much having the base layer, the mid layer, and your top layer, potentially a summit layer, depending on where your goal is for the day. So I just showed you that your base layers for your mid layers, this right here is a quarter zip. The reason why quarter zips are so awesome, and you know it's a quarter zip because it only goes down. And this actually helps retain heat with the layer as well, so that heat not seeping through all of the zippers. This Rab Nexus pull is a fantastic example, but this is what you might want to wear, for example, on top of your base layer. For your primary coat, there are multiple different insulations that you can do. There's down, there's polyester synthetic, there's Primaloft synthetic, and some other brands have their own version of their own synthetic insulation as well. Down is Honestly, probably the most common one that people use and down is great if the conditions are dry because down there is tech down, which does keep water off for the down feathers, but it's still a down coat and it won't retain its heat properties that well. So you always wanna make sure that you at least have something that can keep water off of you and also keep you warm. You can have the Patagonia Nano Air or the Mountain Equipment Kinesis Coat. This right here is filled with a Primaloft synthetic down, and this right here is filled with, it's actually not filled, it's a fabric on the inside that is Mountain Equipment's own version of insulation. That's kind of a special thread that they use. It's not that one is gonna outperform the other, it's simply just they're gonna get to the same destination, but in a different method. This Rab Puffy is honestly, probably one of the best ones on the market when it comes to puppies. You get a real down coat. They are filled with 
feathers and those feathers do have a specific quality rating. I don't recommend getting any type of coat that has a rating lower than 350, uh, but this right here is going to be pretty much the thing that's gonna keep you warm the whole time if you are in sub-zero temperatures. You won't always find yourself needing a puffy, but when you do, you definitely want it. Those mid-layer coats that I showed you is pretty much um, something that's you're probably gonna be wearing most of the time on your approach to the mountain. But if it's extremely windy or really wet, you want a shell. Shell is another way of pretty much just saying a raincoat. If you have any type of raincoat at all, you're gonna want that. The shell obviously just keeps moisture off of you. I have a mountain equipment Gore-Tex shell here and I have a Neurona shell that's also Gore-Tex. Gore-Tex comes in multiple different brands. It doesn't have to be one specific brand, but Gore-Tex is awesome. You have other brands like Outdoor Research. They're, each individual raincoat has their own saturation point. So you want to make sure that saturation point isn't too low. And the saturation point is that it can have water on it for long periods of time before it's going to actually saturate through and start losing most of its properties. Another thing to note is that when you have high quality Gore-Tex or coats like this, they have awesome zippers and stuff like that to be able to ventilate in other areas like your armpits and whatever. Uh, but they also are breathable. So they're not just trapping heat and moisture in when they get wet, maybe like your boots do. These actually are able to dry out over time. There are multiple different types of pants that you can get, but it's pretty straightforward. Either it has insulation properties or it doesn't have insulation properties. And most of the ones that don't have insulation properties are either gonna be fully waterproof or they're gonna have a breathable fabric. So this wrap pant right here is breathable. It's stretchy, but it also has an insulation uh, fleece type liner on the inside, which I personally, I really like that, but you also don't wanna do that on a really hot day. So I would wear this if the temperatures were probably like 20 degrees or colder. The shell, this is like, you're going through super deep snow, obviously, like this also has like a, a liner on the inside as well that can cup over your hiking boot. And this is completely waterproof. And of course, breathable. And you pretty much, you have this, you don't necessarily have to have an insulation layer if you have your your base layer on underneath these. So that's another thing. That's the reason why you won't have to have a pant that has a insulated fleece layer because you can have your merino wool base layer underneath your shell. This is the pant that I actually personally use. This is the Ortovox Brenta. Again, it's water repellent, not waterproof, uh, but it's, it's very, very stretchy. I have great mobility. That way you can use your snowshoes in full mobility. And there's no insulation layer, but that's okay because I like using my merino wool base layer underneath it. We're gonna talk about gloves next. There are multiple different types of gloves that you can have, just like your coats. You want them for different temperatures and different environments. For whichever glove you get, make sure you get something that you can start out with. Just how you want to be bold and start cold. You don't want to start with your warmest glove first because then you're going to take your hand out and then you're going to be cold and then put it back in. You want to find a glove that is that is thin, that might have some water repellency features to it and a little bit insulated. Then you can also have your, we could call a mid-layer glove, which is that once you're probably up at elevation and you're kind of trudging through snow and whatever, and you need something just a little bit warmer, you can switch to your thicker glove. And by the way, right here, this is a five finger glove, but if you want the most warmth for what you're gonna do, you want a mitt. Now, these right here would be considered summit mitts. They do make low level mitts as well for like low altitude. I personally love mitts. They don't offer great dexterity. They also make lobster claw mitts as well, which I do love those because you can still use your index finger. Um, but mitts are traditionally going to keep your hands warmer, but these are summit mitts. And of course, an extra pair of gloves in your backpack. These Rab Xeon mitts are a fantastic emergency use glove as well, uh, because this is gonna be a great glove to just throw on if you need something super, super light compactable and uh, to get your hands, keep your hands warm. Of course, keeping your head warm, this is a fleece line winter cap this is skeeta skeeta makes a lot of really fun uh, designs um, but something just to keep your head warm it doesn't have to be anything particular uh, but there are also thinner ones as well that is more like a liner uh, in case it's really hot out but your ears are still kind of cold uh, this is also a merino wool cap as well uh, there's also of course your buff the buff is actually a crucial thing because when you're up at elevation you need to keep your mouth from freezing or that wind or whatever or you're starting out on a negative 20 degree day you definitely want to get a buff. They have fleece line layers and they also have non fleece line layers as well. Headlamps are very important. Always have backup batteries. Of course, you don't necessarily have to have two headlamps, but you do need to have an extra pair of batteries. Stay away from regular alkaline batteries. Make sure you always go for lithium ion because they drain slower in winter. Crampons, not entirely necessary. I don't, I've actually never needed these in the high peaks. If you have good enough snowshoes, then you don't actually need crampons. So this is something that I actually say you don't even need. 
Same thing with the mountaineering axe. The mountaineering axe, uh, not to be confused with an ice tool, this is also known as a ice axe. I haven't needed these in very many situations, but they definitely do come in handy. So it is always nice to carry one of these, especially if you get to a really large section where you feel like you want to butt slide. These can also help control your descent. Butt slide responsibly. Keeping your water warm, there's two different methods to be able to do this. Throw away your bladder, you're not going to use it in the wintertime. You have Nalgene's and you can use Hydro Flasks. You can take your Nalgene, big, big beta point here. Remember this, take your Nalgene, fill it with already really warm water, put a wool sock over it and put it upside down because water freezes from the top down. You don't want it to be this way or your cap's gonna freeze or you're gonna get a line of ice right on the top. That's how you'll utilize Nalgene's, uh, but Hydro Flasks are really great at insulation. Still maybe consider putting a wool sock on it for extra insulation. Med kits. Make sure that your med kits, you're not just grabbing one off the shelf and throw it in your backpack because there's a lot of pointless stuff in these because they're just used for generalized outdoor recreation. You wanna make sure that you have the essential stuff. You wanna have anything to treat a wound. I love taking ibuprofen if I need it, maybe even a SAM splint in case you twist your ankle or you need to get yourself out. Uh, but med kits in the wintertime are probably not as extensive as they might be in the summertime just because the conditions are different. Something that's super important for being on top of the summits here in the high peaks are your ski goggles. You do not want to go without these because even if it's not a super cold day, that wind, I have gotten first degree frostbite on my face from not having, well, because my ski goggles froze over. Just be careful what conditions you go out in, of course. Uh, but you definitely always want to carry your ski goggles in your pack. And of course, also just having your eyewear. You can have regular sunglasses or even these reactive sunglasses as well to change according to the light. When it comes to your food, you want to make sure that you're actually bringing real hearty and whole food. Skip the cliff bars, skip the Luna bars because they're hard to eat. Make sandwiches, make PB and J. Actually bring stuff that you can chew and that you can eat that is very calorie dense. You can even bring a dehydrated meal if you'd like. Always bring your map and compass with you. Of course, you never want to forget these because you never know when you're gonna need it or when someone else might need it. For emergencies, if you need to stay somewhere for a long period of time or stay overnight somewhere, God forbid, you wanna get a bivy. These bivvies are breathable, they are waterproof, and they have sometimes an insulation layer on them. Always just store this in the bottom of your backpack because you never know when you're gonna need it. An X-Bed pad, I love these guys. You can just fold them up, put them in your pack, and then when you need to sit down on the snow and eat because it's hard to sit in the winter somewhere, you can just sit down right on one of these guys and unfold it. And last but not least, your backpack and trekking poles. Your trekking poles, take your trekking poles. If you don't use your trekking poles in the summer, you want them in the winter time. They help you go across snow, especially when it's really deep. They help you go uphill. Find a pair of trekking poles that's right for you and that also have the baskets on the bottom. And as well as your backpack, you can use your summer backpack if you'd like. It doesn't matter specifically what backpack you use. Uh, I think the, ta the Tempest, the Tempest or the Talon 30, 30 liters is honestly a fantastic leaderage uh, to have out in the high peaks. Not too much space and it's not too little space. So guys, that's pretty much it. I hope I didn't bore you. I hope that wasn't too much information, but seriously, I just want you to stay safe and I want you to have a successful outing. Thanks again so much for watching. There's awesome content on this channel. If you guys need to see anything out in the high peaks, see what other hikes are like, feel free to check out the rest of my videos. With that being said, winter is well on its way here in Lake Placid and ready to go summit some mountains. I hope you are too. I'm Jonathan Zaharik and we'll see you next time.